I'm here today to give you another reason to celebrate. You see, there was sort of a landmark ruling that hasn't really been covered adequately by the media. There was a $12 million verdict given to a former Blue Cross Blue Shield employee. Her name is Lisa Domsky. And it was a federal jury in Detroit that awarded her this because that insurance company forced her during the COVID years to get the COVID shot and when she declined, they fired her. And for that dismissal, she won this $12 million verdict, which honestly, I hope it catches on. So she worked at Blue Cross Blue Shield for more than 30 years as an IT specialist before she was unjustly fired. I'm just going to put it like that. Now, let's just sort of break down this $12 million settlement because she was given $1.7 in lost wages by the jury, $1 million in non-economic damages, or economic for the Brits who watch this, and $10 million in punitive damages. And that's the really interesting one, because that's like, like you didn't lose this money, or you shouldn't have even had this money if it weren't for this lawsuit, but we want to punish this company so that it never considers doing something like this again. And that's the thing that when you sort of like, punitive damages, for me, I always think about that as like the the sort of rage or even vengeance part of a a a ruling, and so that's what you see here, and it's kind of refreshing to see that in these cases because I think you know the COVID years were just so very wrong and unjust. There were so many people who suffered greatly as a result of them, either those who actually you know did get the shot or those who did not. Now. I'm, that, that went in, in bad directions for both of them. But for those who, who didn't, you know, they suffered consequences that were, that were social, that were economic. Um, they suffered from various discriminations. And that was what she claimed as well, Damsky. She claimed that she was a victim of religious discrimination. So she filed a religious exemption with the company and they were allowing for medical and religious exemptions. She, fi she filed for this religious exemption. She said that she was Catholic um, and that this was contrary to her faith and they denied her application. And that's what was sort of unique about, I mean, there's a lot unique about the COVID years, but this was, was one of the things that I thought was particularly problematic was that even though they had to allow these religious exemptions, then they put themselves as like an arbiter of whether or not this, this religion does actually require the rejection of vaccines or whether this person's faith is sincerely held. They, they, they place themselves in this position of judging another person's religious faith. Um, a sort of, you know, yeah, literally just a, a test of faith um, by a corporation or in some cases by the government when you had like government agencies who were doing this. And it's just so grievous and, you know, it's like very antithetical as well to, I think, the American ideal, certainly. Now, in the trial, even in earlier court documents, the insurance company questioned whether her religious belief was sincerely held. So it's like, I think that's one of the reasons they probably got such a high punitive uh, d damage verdict was because they, they're still pushing the same stuff. They're still trying to say, well, is this person's, you know, faith sincerely held? What does the the Catholic Church teach on this and how can we evaluate that and how can we fight that? And it's like, that's not your job. And until very recent history, it was like, your medical decisions were your own. Not only did you have the right to make whatever medical decisions you thought that you needed to have, but also like we have HIPAA laws, you know? Someone's not supposed to ask you um, what your medical conditions are and what your decisions you've made in favor of your health. I mean, you even have stuff like the American Disabilities Act that prevents stores from asking you, you know, what medical conditions you have for that service dog that you're bringing in. That's how um, supremely we sort of value this privacy when it comes to healthcare decisions, at least until COVID, right? And then suddenly all of that was thrown out. And yes, of course, there are different arguments that you could make, religiously speaking, to reject the the COVID vaccine, whether it's the, you know, a sort of, um, I guess, purely biblical argument, you know, know your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit kind of thing, or whether you want to argue that the uh, that particular shot was made from fetal cell lines. You know, there are different things there, but it wouldn't be somebody else's decision to say, well, does your belief make sense? Do we agree with the fact that you claim that this belief is attributed to this particular faith, like that that kind of thing, 
uh, it's just, it was just so very wrong. Now, even on the pragmatic level, this woman worked 100% remotely during the pandemic, pandemic, and 75% remotely even before that. So it's like most of the time, she's a tech, right? So most of the time she worked from home. Um, and then when, when the world became hysterical, she worked completely from home, as did so many people who were also, again, forced to get these shots that they didn't agree with or didn't feel were safe or opposed on religious grounds or whatever, you know? And so it was just, <laughs> in her case, and in a lot of cases, it wouldn't even make sense purely pragmatically, even if you throw out the entire moral argument, you know? And yet Blue Cross Blue Shield tried to force her, and now they're paying for that. But I do think that it's inexcusable to force someone to get a medical treatment as a condition of, you know, continued employment. I, I really think that ought to be considered reprehensible morally for all of us. Like, even if it wasn't something that was brand new on the market and, you know, <clears throat> experimental and fast-tracked through. Uh, and yet, with this, it's like all of these all of these general norms and these established uh, moral frameworks in regards to people's privacy, in regards to their ability to control their own body, these things were just thrown out. But fortunately, we have this win on the board. And I thought I just wanted to share it with you because it's like, it is great news. Other lawsuits will likely follow. Hopefully, they will get punitive damages as well so that other companies can learn from their mistakes. I do think it's interesting, though, like the whole. As we just came out of this election season where abortion was the big topic and then you know the whole my body my choice motion just like and then you realize when you think about these cases that those people don't actually really care about bodily autonomy at all that's never what it was actually about because it's because when you look at the COVID years they didn't care about bodily autonomy about you having your own right to make your own medical decisions that didn't matter at all what it what mattered was whether or not they could actually have an abortion and end a child's life. An entirely distinct thing. So I think it's just important in, in reflection when we see these different things, these different headlines all at the same time, that sometimes can make things even more clear. But yes, go ahead and celebrate this victory and I do hope that we end up with a lot more cases like this that, are, that can penalize these companies appropriately for the just incredibly immoral decisions that they made. Hey, you're still here! Don't forget to give the video a like, subscribe if you haven't already, and share it with your friends. I've also got links in the description as to how you can help support my work. Thank you so much!